All right, uh, Shalom. Before I start, we give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rechach Rash, the honors to the apostles and elders of the millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all like Akim, Wak Wakim, learning, teaching, truth, and sincerity. This is going to be uh, another video for the Spirit. Uh, basically, uh, uh, and I'm, I know I'm late to the game, but it's a, uh, a jab at uh, vocab alone. You know, basically, I'm going to be grabbing examples out of the scriptures showing you how righteous holy men have uh, basically outright lied or decided to use guile in order to better their situation or to get them out of a situation all right because vocab can't understand that paul was simply uh trying appeal to the better nature of king agrippa, uh, king agrippa all right he didn't want to convert him he didn't want king agrippa to believe all right he simply tried to verbally persuade him all right, so hopefully he might be able to get out of his uh, change to be released from being a prisoner. All right, because he was awaiting uh, basically trial for two years. All right, if I'm if I remember correctly. All right. Yeah, in a modern day scenario, man, you get pulled over by the police. Do you get to curse and rant and rave? And no, you give, you give them sweet sounding words. All right, what does it tell you? Soft words, uh, turn away wrath. All right, but I'm gonna grab the scripture. Hey, and you know. If, you, if the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai isn't dealing with you, if the comforter, if they haven't sent the comforter down to you, you're just not going to get it. These, these same words exist for everyone to read. It's just that a certain group of people are chosen and meant to get it, and the majority of this world is not. That's simply why Vocab and the rest of these other people just can't get it. They're simply not chosen. All right, but I'm going to get this example. This is Genesis chapter uh, 27. I'm going to start at verse 19. It says, Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. So now this is going back to when Jacob procured the birthright. All right. A, he lied. He outright said he was Esau, and we know that he isn't. All right. He had, uh, his mother helped him by, you know, cooking the food, uh, putting uh, fur on him, all right, because he was trying to get uh, Esau's blessing, which he did, which we did, our forefather. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you should be thankful, <laughs> all right, that Jacob did what he did, all right, and even him doing what he do, did shows you, when you look at, you know, people today, what type of people are really good at getting over, all right, the Israelites, all right, Israelites are good at getting over on you, all right, uh, you, you, uh, uh, Jake, I asked you to borrow, borrow a dollar. You know, next thing you know, you end up, hey man, let me get a, you got another dollar? Well, shoot, man, let me get five. I'm finna, you know, hey, that runs in our blood. All right, but continuing on. So this is basically Jacob, a righteous man, a holy man, lying to his father. All right. And it was all for prophecy, of course. But verse 20 says, And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou has found it so quickly my son and he said because the lord thy power brought it to me all right so not only did he lie about being esau but he basically was facetious of where he got it from all right yes in the retrospect in the grand scheme of things the heavenly father did provide it to jacob but who made it his mother because his mother also loved she loved jacob more so than esau and she wanted jacob she helped him get that birthright but he outright told a farce to his father all right all right does that does that does that initiate in your head vocab all right i know it's not going to you have righteous men that will use sly speech all right and slick tactics in order to gain the advantage all right in which paul was doing over king uh, agrippa all right and you know i'll towards the latter end of the video i'll, I'll get to it you know showing you what was said between Paul and King Agrippa, but trust me, he didn't want that Edomite, that heathen, that devil to be converted. He was simply trying to coerce him to release him of his chains. All right, now I'll get another example in Genesis. Jacob, once again, was being slick with his tongue, was getting over. All right, now this is, uh, this is, Let's see, let's see. Genesis. Okay, 30, 
three. Uh, con. Okay, this is Genesis 33 and I'll start at I'll start Salaku. I uh, At 12, all right. This is when Jacob and Esau, you know, after everything, you know, the years later, when everything rolled over, you know, when Esau was coming to meet Jacob, you know, Jacob was in fear for his life, you know, remembering, you know, their history that Esau was coming to slam, you know. So eventually, you know, you read it through, uh, they made up, you know, and Esau, you know, he was uh, basically propositioned him to come back to Mount Seir with him, all right. So this is Genesis 33, and we'll start at verse 12. It says, and he said, let us take our journey and let us go, and I will go before thee. So Esau uh, was saying, he's like, look, come on, Jacob, you and your family, come with me. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll leave. Verse 13, and he said unto him, my Lord, knoweth that the children are tender, uh, and the flocks and the herds with young, and, slot, and the flocks and the herds with young are with me. And if men should overdrive them one day, all the flock will die. Let my Lord, I pray thee, pass over before his servant, and I will lead on softly, according as the cattle that goeth before me, and the children be able to endure, until I come unto my Lord, unto Seir. So Jacob was basically saying, Ah, oh, man, you know what? Man, I, I, got the, I got the little ones, I got the, you know, these firstlings of the, of the flock. Hey, man, look, you, 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 had, you go on, and I'll catch up. All right, and we're going to see, <laughs> we're going to, let it, hey, let's see how it plays out. Verse 15, And Esau said, Let me now leave with thee some of the folk that are with me. And he said, What needeth it? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. So Jacob said, No, I don't need none of your guys with me. I, I'll catch up. You know, just, hey, hey, trust me, I'm your brother. You know, I, hey, I'm, I'm going to catch up. You know, in other words, filling in the blanks for you. Verse 16, So Esau returned that day, on his way unto Seir, and Jacob journeyed to Sukkoth, and built him a house, and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place is called Sukkoth. Hey, so basically, Jacob, you know, uh, loitered, all right, he did verbal gymnastics to convince Esau to go back to Seir, and then he got the fuck on up out of there. Why? Because he didn't trust Esau. So he used cunning and soft words to convince the Edomite, all right, Edom, Esau, the first Edomite, to go on about his business. He basically, he's like, ah, well, you know, man, Esau, man, I'll catch up, man, we'll catch up. And it took, hey, he didn't go, he, he never went to go see Esau, all right. The next time they saw each other, I believe, is when uh, Isaac died, all right. But, hey, but he, he didn't go to him. Why? Because he didn't trust him, all right. And Paul... He was saying the things that he said to King Agrippa. Why? Because he was trying to get over on him. And I'm just grabbing these. That just happened. I, these two examples are in my head. Showing you that righteous holy men will use tactics in order to get themselves out of situations. Alright. So Paul wasn't literally trying to uh, persuade Agrippa. He was using sneaky tactics to get himself out of said situation. All right, so now let's go to it and read it now in the book of Acts. So those who may not know understand what, what's uh, going on here. All right, so now we're going to go to, let's see. Okay. This is... This is uh, Acts chapter 26. I'm going to start. You know, I'm not going to read the whole story. Basically, Paul was giving his whole life history. He was talking about the ministry of Yahweh HaMashiach, you know, telling of the mighty acts and whatnot. He was basically giving, them, giving him the rundown of the faith. All right. In the, and so we're going to read Acts 26. We're going to start at, uh, we're going to start at 24. All right. And I'm grabbing this for a reason. I, I, I wanted to to use this scripture for a long time now and I finally get to use it. Alright? It says and and as 
And as he thus spake for himself, speaking about Paul, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make it thee mad. Verse 25, But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. So basically, Paul was doing so much filibustering. He was speaking so much, you know, about the faith and the scriptures and whatnot, that basically he was starting, he was, it was starting to get on uh, Festus's nerves. He said, thou art, he said, thou art beside thyself. He basically said, hey, look, man, hey, you, he's, he's like, hey, look, hey, speed it up. You're talking too much. You, you, hey, come on. Why? Because Paul was trying to, he was trying to, he was trying to smooth it over, all right? And I'll, hey, you get, let's, you know, let's say you get stopped by the police, all right? You're going you're gonna to have your license, your registration on deck, all right? ID, oh, no, officer, you know, oh, no, my, I, I got my stuff on this day, so-and-so day. You pulling out papers, you getting this, you pulling up pictures. He's like, look, okay, look, man, all right, look, I don't need that. All right, you're good, you're clean, you can go. That's Paul, that's what he was basically doing, all right? He was, he was covering, Paul was covering his ass and trying to get them shackles up off of him, vocab. He didn't want to sincerely convert the, uh, uh, Agrippa, all right? Because there might have been Israelite uh, centurions in there that were listening, but for Agrippa, he wasn't trying to convert. He was trying to persuade him into letting him loose. All right, verse 26. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in the corner. 20, verse 27, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Verse 29, the main point. And Paul said, I would to the most high power, that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. All right. So basically, and he said that, I wish that y'all were as me, except these bonds, meaning what? If they all believed in the Lord, then they wouldn't have allowed him to be a prisoner. They would have released him. All right? this, he was basically convincing, convincing them to release him. That's all that it was. He didn't truly want them to be Israelites. Otherwise, he wouldn't have mentioned the bond part. He would have said, I, hey, you, you know how Jake is. I wish y'all was all like me, except for these bonds. You know, he had the chains. He's probably like, except for these bonds, all right? He was putting on a show to try to have himself released. He didn't truly care for the conversion of Agrippa, all right? And those other heathens that were in there, all right? But vocab, you don't have the spirit dealing with you. You don't know, you don't know how the spirit works, all right? You don't have proper discernment. It's the same reason why King David feigned himself mad in order to get out of that situation with them Canaanites, or not uh, with them Hamites. I, I, I believe they may have been Philistines. All right, but let's, let's get this real quick. You know, it's not gonna be a real long video. I just gotta grab this to show that vocab, don't know what he's talking about. All right, Proverbs 1501. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. All right, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge or right, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Perfect. Alright, so Paul was being a wise man. He was giving soft answers for his case and for his estead to either A, have his sentence drop or to lessen it. Alright, if he would have been in there talking shit, is going to come back and slay all of you. F y'all, F you, F your mama. You know, he would have had, they'd have beheaded him. Alright, you know, and it's just as simple as that. You know, this video doesn't have to be drawn on any longer. I just wanted to bring those examples out. It's a common thing for our people to get to drawn out their sentences to try to weasel their way out of a situation. All right. So with that, let me give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakhach the honors to the apostles that was great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all like Akim, Wakwathim, learning, teaching, and truth uh, and sincerity. You know, hey. Don't let uh, these scoffers uh, shake your faith. Vocab, he's simply trying to make you believe that you're, no, that you're not an Israelite. He just wants you to go back to being the shit, the piece of shit that you are in the world. You know, don't let him, don't let anybody. All right, so with that, we'll say Shalom.